Adversity is seen as an obstacle. I say it's beautiful. You're probably wondering how can something be so cruel yet so beautiful or even good for you. You're probably thinking I'm currently out of my mind. Let me tell you something. Three years ago, I took the decision to come to the Netherlands all by myself, away from my friends, away from my family, away from my culture, and away from my comfort zone, away from everything. I left a Lebanese household and came here with the vision of conquering the world, the vision of becoming an unstoppable machine. As soon as I landed, that bubble popped. I fell heavily. Inconvenience after inconvenience, problem after problem. I was failing in life. I was failing in university. I couldn't keep my head down and dedicate my time into anything. Shortly after, I went back home for the holidays and a new reality kicked in. How? That story I share with you. It was December 2020. I was having lunch with my family. It all seems normal. I go to the washroom to wash my hands and I hear both my mother and eldest sister screaming. I have never heard my mom scream out loud in my life. Bear in mind, an Arab scream is loud. <laughs> Anyways, I rush to the dining area just to see my father on the floor. I lift him with my hands that couldn't stop shaking. My eyes couldn't see anything but my father. For a split second, I thought I had lost my idol, the man I always looked up to as a kid. My father had a cardiac arrest. He was taken to the hospital and had an electric cardiogram placed on his heart, feet, and both his arms for 72 hours. Now, we laugh at how worried I was. But that very moment hit me. That fall was breathtaking. And that memory is something I will always carry with me whenever I feel helpless. Not only that memory, but how he stood up after he had came back from the hospital. No stress, no fear. The only thing I saw on that man's face was a smile. I know as you grow up, your body might fail you at some point. But what did that fall teach me? The message to take away. Well, stressing over the situation won't solve it. Using fear as a protective mechanism won't necessarily protect you. In fact, it makes things worse. I can go on for hours talking about the health hazards of stress and fear, but I'm not here to do that. My father's fall was such an important lesson. It had taught me that all the worries I had carried with me coming here were stopping me. That sometimes, or most of the times actually, having a problem crush into your life is a lesson to grow. Now, I'm not saying that you need to have cardiac problems to grow, but we can all perceive a problem in a different perspective. See, as young kids, one's biggest worry was having melted ice cream or having a dragon chasing us in our sleep. But as we evolve, we start experiencing more serious problems, more adversity. Let me clarify this. When we define adversity, we mean a state of serious difficulty. What you define as adversity goes back to you. Some relate the state of adversity to death or not having the financial capacity to feed yourself. Others to waking up early in the morning. See, whatever your challenge might be, remember one thing. We don't have a say in the problems we face. But luckily enough, we do have a say in how we react to the state of serious difficulty. 
just like how a lobster grows. Do you know how a lobster grows? Well, a lobster is a mushy animal that lives inside a rigid shell. And that shell does not expand. So how does the lobster grow? Why is this any relevant? As the lobster grows, the shell becomes too tight, too confining, uncomfortable. So the lobster goes inside a rock, casts its shell off to produce a new one. Here's the interesting bit. The stimulus for the lobster to grow, ladies and gentlemen, is when it feels uncomfortable. Times of stress are a signal for growth. And only when you use adversity properly, then and only then you can grow through adversity. Think of, any, think of any problem you had in your time. Take a moment, let's do that together, shall we? We view the series of events related to adversity in three different ways. One, you run away from the problem. That is ignoring it, giving it your back, fearing the problem. Two, you run around the problem. Here is when you recognize you have a problem currently going on in your life, but you don't necessarily do anything about it. Say you procrastinate the problem. And three, you run towards the problem. You attack the problem. Today, I choose to attack because I want to make the best out of things. And that will not work out by running away or around the problem, by fearing the problem. Fear can't stand beauty. In fact, their opponents. Think of any scary situation you had in your time. If you have beauty with it, the fear will just control. Here's one of my favorite quotes by Walt Disney. He said, all the adversity I've had in my life, all the troubles, the obstacles have strengthened me. You may not realize when it happens, but a kick in the teeth may be the best thing in the world for you. See, my father's fall kicked me out of adversity and simultaneously, it has given me a very valuable gift. The opportunity to reflect. There are those who had life throw obstacles at them more than you or I can ever imagine. Societies that had their entire families torn out by war. Brothers and sisters that don't have enough money to put food on their table. Think about the next time you get mad when you don't receive a text back. The next time you get stuck in traffic. You end up realizing that 90% of our problems aren't problems, only inconveniences. That most of the pain we indulge isn't pain, only soreness, discomfort. But when that 10% kicks in, when you're unsure you can handle your adversity, be thankful. Hard times present you the chance to reinvent yourself change your mindset, or find an undiscovered bridge that might get you over this hurdle. You are where you are in life for a reason. Battling it to be elsewhere drains the energy out of you. Now, it may seem that your life is being crushed by a rude intruder. And for the case of simplicity, let's give this rude intruder a name, shall we? How about we name it adversity, okay? But what if is this meant to happen? This rude intruder may be the catalyst to your development to help you live a more meaningful life or at least a life you have always wanted. And just like a good friend of mine, Steve Harvey, once said, he's not actually my friend, by the way. If you're going through hell, then keep going. Why would you stop in hell? I choose to step into my life without fearing adversity. What do you choose? Thank you.